Morphine, morphine, take 'em back to lemon trees beyond the beaten track. Morphine, steal into my papa's dream. Figgy fresky, vino puro, belly vesti, el ucazzo duro, morfina. Aiuta lua sonare. Morphine, steal into my papa's dream. My father's grimace of pain meant it was time to snap my fingers and say, per favore, another shot of morphine, if you will. And the nurses, so gentile, were always pleased to oblige. The intensive care unit created a state of artificial limbo that must have been very scary for my father. He was certainly no fan of technology. After 40 years in Canada, 40 anni in Canada, Pa remained a Sicilian farmer. A farmer who well understood the old earth beneath his feet. But he had trouble relating to the new world before his eyes. Even the telephone. Ah. Lutalavone was an intrusive machine that truly bewildered him. Now, the telephone very rarely rang for him, but on the occasion when it did, we called out, Pa, Lutalavone, per te! Come, per me, ma, si sicuro che per me? Are you sure it's for me? And we held the receiver out to him and said, Si, per te, vieni, piglialo, allestate! Slowly and suspiciously, he made his way to the phone. Per me, it is. A coma. Suddenly, he'd stop to make sure his fly was done up. A couple more steps, and he'd stop again, this time at a mirror to comb his hair. And if it was a long-distance call from Sicily, we almost had to restrain him from changing into a clean shirt. But for us, his six wild urban kids, technology is what the new world was all about. We worshipped any gadget we can afford. But there was no way, <laughs> no way we expected our parents to understand when we told them that the kitchen radio wasn't enough. What we desperately needed was a hi-fi stereo with an automatic record changer. And we bought a slick new 1959 Zenith hi-fi stereo from Eaton's. Whoa! Nilo Eaton Back in the days when a major appliance from Eaton's was as important as citizenship. And they delivered. <laughs> And it was delivered while my father wasn't home. Oh, we also bought a stack of records, and were we ever anxious to make them last. And that evening, when my father walked through the door, he was almost blown back out to Bay Street by the loud, strange noise that greeted him. And he followed this noise into the living room, and there he set his stunned gaze upon his six kids, ranging in age from five to 15. <laughs> we were completely possessed by demonic rock and roll as we gyrated and sang along with Elvis Presley. A rock and roll woman, your child of them blues. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. High five. A rock and roll woman, your child of them blues. <laughs> oh! Per chi sta batteria, eh? Per chi sta buttana batteria? Why this noise? He shifted his gaze from us to the enormous hi fi stereo console that dominated the tiny living room space. And his questions continued. Ma chi sta cosa, eh? Kula kata, eh? With his usual cautious step, Bob walked up to the hi-fi stereo and he dunked his head into the open well where the mechanism gleamed up at him. And he fixed his eyes on the turntable and became mesmerized. The needle had come to the end of the Elvis Presley record and Bob continued to stare, dumbfounded as the arm automatically lifted off the record and shifted horizontally. And then it rose again to the level of the stack of records above the turntable and again shifted horizontally until it tapped the bottom record in the stack, causing it to fall exactly over top the last spinning record. And then, with 1959 robotic precision, that needle made a pinpoint landing at the beginning of the next record. Maria, Maria. <laughs> and we marveled at Paz transfixed state, wondering what his reaction was going to be when he heard this next record. Because we bought it especially for Pa. That was 
a tarantella. That tarantella made my father's face light up with a big smile as he bowed his head deeper into the well, almost touching the mechanism with his nose. And addressing the turntable, he said, Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we found this funny because for us, this marked the point where Pa had gone beyond simply being a foreigner, way beyond. From now on, he was... <laughs> Pa, the extraterrestrial. <laughs>